thank you. Uh, welcome to our webinar today. Um, we're here today to talk about uh, BSN's Open Permission uh, Blockchain Initiative. Uh, I'm Tim Bailey. I'm with uh, Red Date Technologies um, and have invited our distinguished panel here today. And I'm going to uh, go along the panel and ask uh, each of the panel members to introduce themselves and also what company they're with and, and what their role is. So why don't we, uh, Brian, we'll start with you. Oh, okay. Thank you, Tim. Uh, and thank you, BSN, for inviting me to here. So I, my name is Brian, founder of uh, Optic Project. So uh, I, I am a kind of a serious uh, entrepre entrepreneur. My start, I started my career in Silicon Valley. Then I did several startups and also working in between China and the United States. So current, recently, we are working on this object project. It's an NFT a platform on, on the both public chain and also on the permission blockchain. So we actually launched the first version in, of Optic on um, BS and OPB recently. I'd like to share more today. Good. Good. Well, we're excited to learn more from you today. Uh, Jeffrey. Hi. Hi, team. Yeah. Thank you, team. And uh, yeah, yeah. My name is uh, Jeffrey Hu from Xnet, uh, and also the dev team of the uh, Xnet is called Bianji. So I'm the director of research of Bianji. Uh, so for Bianji, it's a high tech enterprise in China, and also the uh, dev team, core dev team of the Xnet, and also we are the contributor of the Cosmos uh, project, which is a very famous uh, public blockchain uh, project. And uh, recently, we are working together with BSN uh, since last year to launch uh, several projects like Arata Hub and also the Wenchang Open Permission Blockchains, which we'll talk uh, more about today. Very good. Thank you. And Ethan. Hello. Um, yeah, I'm Ethan. I am the founder of Confio. We are the inventors of Cosmosm. It's a smart contracting platform the integrates into the Cosmos network. Um, I've been working with Cosmos for quite some years as a developer, and I have launched this initiative. Uh, Cosmos was also integrated into the uh, IrisNet as well, I think, and at least test nets, and it should be available uh, sometime soon. Jeffrey can mention more about that. Um, in addition to supporting this platform, a smart contracting engine, which we are happy to support, we are also um, working on our own blockchain, which is called T-Grade, which should be regulatory friendly. We're focusing in Europe now, but very interested in the Chinese market as well. Support regulations and DeFi okay, together. Great. Very good. Well, Ethan, maybe starting with you, can, can you tell us a little bit more about your role in um, bringing global developers to the Chinese market? Um, yeah, right now, uh, there are two ways many people think of when you want to add to the blockchain. Uh, one is, you basically write solidity contracts and you're using EVM-based chain write solidity contracts. And if you're not doing that, you're basically deploying your own code. So um, you've previously forked Bitcoin. Now people are forking things like using Cosmos SDK, building your own Go applications, deploying your own native code. Um, that is pretty hard to get integrated into a new market because especially if you have regulations and rules, it's, you have to build a whole consensus layer from the ground up. Um, so what we're providing is another option for smart contracting languages. So Cosmosm allows you to write contracts in Rust. We aim to have contracts written in Go in the next 12 months as well. Um, to, and a really uh, to allow very secure is to security first. There's lots of errors in solidity. If it happens, you need lots of expensive audits. So we're working uh, a security first framework. Um, and there are many projects working outside of China they are using this now, especially um, in Korea and Europe and in uh, the United States. And if we bring this platform into China, developers that are used to using Cosmosm contracts can port their logic uh, into a Chinese uh, chain, uh, BSN chain, quite easily. Great. Great, thanks. Thank you, Brian. Maybe you can could you tell us a little bit more about what are some of the challenges um, for DAP? providers if they want to enter the Chinese market? Okay, yeah. I'd like to share some thoughts on this. Uh, so basically, I, I think uh, 
the Chinese market is uh, well, very attractive you know, to the global developers and the business. But at the same time, this, uh, in this area, it's highly regulated, especially on the uh, so-called virtual currency part of uh, business, right? So uh, the reason a lot of uh, uh, DApp uh, from the international space cannot directly enter Chinese market is because of such regulation. But on the other side, uh, I think public chain means uh, borderless, right? So basically, uh, we can uh, still get access to some kind of uh, public chain applications. But, but on the other side, you cannot directly do the local business at here, right? If you want to run the local business in Chinese market, you need to pay attention to the regulation and also mm -hmm. business entity registration and follow certain kind of uh, rules and the regulation here. So I, I think it's not a big hurdle, but you just need to make sure it fits into the whole uh, requirements. I think this is also applied to some other regions and the countries, right? So each country have their own requirements for lending your app into the local market. So, yeah, so I think uh, just uh, make sure the app, the app uh, still, you if you have a business entity associated with your D app, just follow the certain rules. Uh, especially not to, uh, well, uh, do the virtual currency part, right? So to token part should be avoided. So just make sure you can run the normal business and the, to provide the real value to the local market. That's the key. Right. And, and, and I think that's also where the BSN's open permission blockchain initiative comes into place, right? By, by taking some of the key characteristics of some of the big uh, famous public chains and then making modifications to make them able to be used legally in China, right? Stripping out yeah. the cryptocurrency and using fiat, mm. Um, mm. having all the nodes be permissioned. Um, and then, then that enables it to be used in China, correct? Yeah, exa exactly. So that's uh, the certain rules we need to follow. At the same time, I think BSN is providing a pretty good platform uh, with a uh, global, uh, well, uh, well, strategy, right? So they have the international part and also the Chinese national part. So basically for the token part, we are using kind of a point system, uh, inside the uh, BSN OPB. At the same time, mm -hmm. we are able to use the fiat gateway to make payments, uh, to, 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 to run the business here. So yeah, just, uh, different uh, setup and, uh, to, the BSN already help us to uh, kind of follow the regulation of each local market. So it's it's easier for developer to develop their application on top of that. Right. So um, Jeffrey, can you can you talk a little bit um, about why you decided to join um, the OPB initiative in the first place? Yeah, yeah, sure. I'm very happy to to share my uh, thoughts and uh, our experience in joining the open information blockchains. So, um, so the Wen Chang Chen, uh, I, I believe, is uh, the first, or maybe one of the first open information blockchains that launched in the BISN. And the uh, Wen Chang Chen is actually backed with the Cosmos and also the Earthnet technology and developed by Bianjie. And the BISNs. Um, Open Permission Blockchain Initiative, I, I remember that was uh, announced uh, in September last year and to promote uh, to uh, regular uh, development of public blockchain technology and introduce these uh, technologies in China in a more controlled and compliant uh, uh, way for their, uh, for their uh, development and also the operations. So the Cosmos and the Xnet was uh, selected uh, for their uh, unique features and framework. So within the, this uh, first batch of the uh, public blockchains to join the BSN Open Permission Initiative. Um, so back to the Wing Chang Chain. Uh, so Wing Chang Chain is aiming to uh, provide a low cost and user friendly open permission uh, blockchain platform that allows the, the developers and also the users to, uh, to deploy and implement and even implement smart contract in um, a more convenient way uh, using the virtual machine like the uh, web, uh, web assembly uh, Ethan mentioned before. And also we provide a more 
uh, maybe flexible ways, like using the I service, which is short for the interchain service with very strong and interchain uh, capability is to support the interaction with the uh, with uh, uh, legacy or uh, even centralized system. So, so, um, so yeah. So back to the the question. So why we decided to join the the OPB initiative? And uh, I, I think the open permission blockchains in BSM will uh, largely f f uh, facilitate the, um, the application of the blockchains projects that can have their real use case in China and also for the even larger uh, marketplace uh, for this kind of the very good and very practical public blockchains that can have th this kind of applications. So that's my, uh, my, my ideas about this. Okay. Well, tell us a little bit. What's your vision for the um, for the Wenchang chain? What's your vision of the future? Uh, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, great. So, um, is um, I think is uh, aiming to provide a more user friendly uh, blockchain platforms, and also um, we provide several features that can um, can uh, really implement this vision. That the, the first thing might be the on-chain and off-chain interoperability since Winchang chain also share the uh, maybe similar and the same uh, technical infrastructure with the Cosmos and the uh, Airsnet. So the interoperability on the Winchang chain is really easier for the future applications and other uh, connections with the different networks. And also uh, beside that, Winchang chain is also providing several other features like the the NFT features, which I think uh, Brian may, maybe will share more about this. So NFT feature is really useful on the wind chain that can provide uh, the real uh, uh, real business and enterprise use cases uh, based on this NFT features. So so you, you mentioned a little bit about NFT and, and Brian's work. How, how did the two of you, you know, come to work together? Um, tell us a little bit, maybe, Brian, you can tell us a little bit more about that, how you came to work together. Mm, sure, yeah. So actually, uh, you know, my team started working on the uh, NFT uh, product uh, in late 2018. Uh, mm. But after, uh, well... Many, uh, that's, uh, many years ago. It's a long history. Yeah, a long, long <laughs> history ago. But the problem is, uh, you, you know, we were building on the uh, Ethereum technology before. But when we try to open up for real business, we found the problems, performance and gas fee. A lot of is issues here is blocking us from to run the real business. It's more like a public demo, right? To, to that show, show up to somebody, but we cannot. But on the other side, our business partner, they are not willing to do business on top of that, just like in a very shaky ground. So mm. last year, I had the chance uh, to work with the IrisNet team and, and the Bianjie team. So I found uh, well, their base technology on the Cosmos is very solid. Uh, on the performance, gas fee, uh, this kind of issue are not a uh, big issue to me. At the same time, I really found they have the interoperability vision uh, building such technology. For example, on the public chain side, uh, they have a Cosmos IrisNet hub, uh, so I can run the, the public international version uh, directly with token economy. On the other side, on the uh, Wen Changlian, uh, it's have the same technology uh, behind it. Uh, mm -hmm. So in the future interoperability will be easier. On the other side, on the BSN, I have I can use directly use the point system, the user management uh, function. And also the fiat gateway directly to mm -hmm. do the real business in Chinese market. So that's, uh, so basically I think Benji team is working on the uh, lower level and my team is working on the business protocol and the business application level. It's a very good match between us. So we are kind of grow together at the same time. So they are building the NFT module in the low level and I am using the NFT module to do the business operation. Yeah. And how did how did the two of you actually meet and get connected? 
well, so uh, actually, I know Arisnet uh, for a long time. So uh, I I uh, I am the founder. They are all the we are all the same uh, university alumni. So we know each other, and I know they have solid uh, technology. That's something I'm looking for. So on the other side, they know I am a business runner, right? To run the real business applications. So that's why we we, we came together. Okay. Good, good. Um, where do you see, um, like, if, if you look out the next five years um, at the market and you know, blockchain technology, um, where do you see yourself in, in the market in the next five years? Okay. Well, basically, in, in my view, uh, so everything is just getting started right now. Uh, so we are in the very early stage of blockchain, especially the real application on top of blockchain. So it's kind of like a 96 in Silicon Valley. Everything is just <laughs> getting started. It, it looks very premature, right? But there's a huge potential here. So that's my feel. So for example, on this NFT business, it's not just for setting up picture or uh, whatever. So it's a real digital asset reflected by NFT uh, infrastructure. So mm -hmm. moving on, it will, it can even penetrate into uh, very uh, deep into our real economy, right? So, so that's why we're uh, building it in our, what kind of like an entertainment world and also the lifestyle sectors. So I see very, very big potential here. So currently we are working with some local business to build use cases first because we want to Build some success case and then educate and uh, we'll try to uh, promote to others. At the same time, we, we want business to have their own service as uh, self-service capability, right? So in the future, the uh, Web 3.0 model is uh, user-centric business model. We should not have another platform as a monopoly to rule everything. So that's uh, something we are building the basic blocks with Bianjie right now. So I, I see very good potential for the next five or 10 years. It's just like we are getting started for next 20 years of uh, Web 3.0, just like the past 20 years in the internet space. Yeah, so I'm very uh, optimistic to that. Great, great. So Ethan, I'm, I'm gonna ask you a similar question. And um, while I, I know you're not in China, I think you're in Europe right now, but maybe if you can talk a little bit about you know, your vision um, for what you see, you know, based on what you see in China, but also in other markets that you're involved in in the next five years. Um, thank you. Thank you for the questions. Um, so, yeah, what we're focusing on besides just Cosmosm, which is low level infrastructure, like what Bianji is working on and IrisNet is great work they do. Um, the other work we're doing is T grade. And so it's a very similar vision. I think a uh, similar vision to this open permission blockchain, but for the European market. Um, so we allow uh, a mixture of proof of stake and proof of authority. So you must be basically a whitelisted chain that's permissioned and then stake tokens as well. So we have this proof of authority, so permissioned uh, chains. Beyond that, we are building the capacity for self-sovereign, self-regulated groups. That means there's lots of regulations. In Europe, there are 30 countries each of their own regulations, and we are not going to put all of that. We will allow a way for a group of, example, um, London financial institutions to create a closed group. In that group, they can then know who's in that group, their KYC, and they can trade with each other according to London rules. So they're able to do any instrument which is legal in England's market between financial institutions and not worry they're trading with some sketchy guy from, I don't know, uh, some mafia guy or black market trader. They know that everyone on there is completely whitelisted. Um, we will be setting up multiple groups, um, mainly focused in the European market. I think it's very interesting, the work with um, BSN and the Open Permission Network blockchain. And I think it will be very nice potential to connect these two. So you would be able to connect legitimate businesses in Europe to legitimate businesses in China because we will provide the European background for it. Um, beyond that one, I would say um, I'd be interested at some point, this technology we're building is all built on Cosmosm contracts, which will also be supported by IrisNet and 
and Yangji's technology, this technology could be modified and brought to the Chinese market also. Once we've proven it works according to regulations, we're able to uphold self-sovereign groups with regulations. For example, if you want to allow a group to issue stocks that can be traded only among credit investors, right? So they have a group of people that are able to be investors. You have a group of companies allowed to issue their own stocks and you're able to trade it. So that idea and that technology will be refining over the next few years. I think there's a huge growth potential in Europe there. And I think in China, when the regulations uh, match the regulations, we'd be happy to move some of that into the Chinese market as well. Um, I do not want to do anything early on there. I want to make sure that it is all with proper regulations. But when the regulations meet, I think that our framework will allow it to be customized easily for the regulations of the Chinese market. Sounds, sounds very interesting. We need, to, we need to stay in touch on that. Uh, Jeffrey, same, same question for you. What, what do you see for yourself and your company um, in the next five years? Well, yeah, I think five years uh, is really, um, I think it's really a, a long time for, uh, for the blockchain, uh, uh, blockchain company and also the whole industry. I think lots of cha- things will change in the five years. But what we believe is that I think uh, more and more applications uh, uh, will using the te- uh, blockchain technologies in this uh, maybe the next five years because uh, we see uh, uh, almost five years ago I think uh, lots of the current technology have not been uh, even um, we even been invented or even think about uh, like five years in the 2016 like the. Uh, um, many uh, uh, DApps and also the uh, uh, many cutting edge consensus and also uh, uh, also the Cosmos and also the ArisNet, the, the main network. So it, it hasn't been launched uh, back to the, the five years ago. So what we believe is that uh, I think uh, with this kind of the many, many kinds of the uh, practical scenarios in the next five years, like, um, uh, like, like in some uh, traditional finance, and in the, uh, also uh, some uh, practical, like the O2O, the, uh, the, uh, uh, yeah. in the past we call this on, online to offline, but uh, in the future we, we need to call it as an on-chain to off-chain, so that we can provide more practical and uh, uh, more useful service to the users that are using the uh, blockchain technology. So uh, I think the BSN's open permission the blockchain's vision is quite, uh, similar uh, of this uh, kind of the future development. So we, we think uh, with the OPB and the other infrastructures, uh, when they are be, became uh, more mature in the next five years, I think lots of the people and lots of the company and lots of the in, uh, enterprises will um, be using this kind of service of the blockchain. I think um, uh, I think lots of industry may be also be changed in the next five years. Um, so, so, uh, so Benjie, uh, I think uh, for our company, we will continue our list kind of ideas that uh, bring lots of the enterprise applications into the blockchain because we, um, I think uh, we have um, uh, keep this kind of ideas uh, since our company uh, established five years ago, so exactly five years ago, and so we uh, uh, so we adopted many kinds of uh, technology like the i service, which can really uh, help this enterprise that can using the uh, uh, their uh, can, can using the i service to integrate with the blockchain technology. So that's uh, what we believe we will have. The Benji will um, will do in the next five five years. We'll uh, we'll keep our uh, development in the blockchain technology and also help uh, more and more enterprise to use the uh, blockchain technologies. Great, great. Um, so Brian, a question for you. Um, if you were to talk to developers who want to enter the Chinese market, what's your advice uh, and guidance for them? Uh, well, I, I think uh, Probably from several angles. The first, uh, well, why do you need to go to Chinese market, right? So you you need to understand the market first. Uh, mm-hmm. So what we are looking for, what this market is looking for, what's the opportunities here? So that's very important. Just like we do any business, we do the assessment, uh, well, feasibility study first, 
right? So, uh, so in this market, there's a huge potential, but probably not on everything, right? So some part is highly regulated, some part is more open. Uh, so, uh, for example, in the lifestyle sector, uh, so it's very, uh, well, because we have a huge consumer base in Chinese market. They need, they're looking for better services and a better quality of services. For example, currently the, like, uh, uh, well, like, uh, the Meituan, Dianping, or, uh, any type of, uh, uh, service sector e-commerce companies in China. Mm. So at the same time, I think we are in the stage, uh, Chinese. Uh, market, uh, some, in some area, I still consider it as an emerging market, uh, in the global space. For example, the NFT, uh, actually, I think it, 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 it represents the next generation of creative economy. So when people, they are, uh, well, live well, they're looking for more, uh, well, uh, higher level value in, in their life. So that's the creativity. Right. So that's why the NFT came into the stage. Uh, so it's uh, very popular in global space. And uh, also it's a very hot topic in China market. So if we can do something to, to really, uh, un, uh, well, basically, uh, to release the uh, power of a Chinese community, uh, of a creativity community, it's very important. Artists, designer, writers, uh, musicians. Uh, writers. So, uh, use the technology to help them to do their own business. That's very important. So, yeah, basically you, you should select the, especially the target. Uh, why do you run to run business in China? At the same time, uh, you need to looking for the right infrastructure, right? That's, uh, I, I would say BSN is a good one to choose because it will help, help you to simplify a lot of stuff. Uh, when you try to land your business into Chinese market, because they already did some homework and uh, uh, applied into such infrastructure for you. So that's uh, a, a, another way to consider that. Maybe BSN even can, can recommend you some uh, emerging technologies or emerging opportunities in Chinese market. Because they are connected to a lot of government, local business, enterprise, they know what's the requirements over there. Yeah. So at, uh, on the other side, I think uh, for the developers, we need to understand uh, how to really run a business. Right. So it's not just an application. Uh, no matter it's powered by blockchain or not, uh, internet software is basically depends on the heavy operation. Right. It's not just a simple product. So that's why you need to spend time in Chinese market. To understand this market and to grow with that. So yeah, so uh, even myself, I am between Silicon Valley and Shanghai. So uh, so I need to spend time here to understand and uh, to talk to my customers. Then uh, that I can find a lot of opportunities here. Yeah. So basically, that's uh, three points I want to make and share. Great, great. Thank you. Um, so Ethan. So Similar question for you. Um, you know, what what's your advice to developers who want to enter China, or for that matter, you know, other other new markets? Um, yeah, I'm not an expert in China, unfortunately, but I think the important point is what Brian said to know the market. Um, we've been focusing. There's this thought in blockchain is universal, unstoppable. Doesn't matter. Everyone's anonymous. Um, and for the first version of blockchain, it was that was the goal. Um, Bitcoin trade Bitcoin, we don't know who you are, except that you do kind of know now. You can undo a lot of the privacy, it's pseudonymous. Um, and Ethereum, anyone can use DeFi, it's great. And then the regulations come in, and every country, the SEC has regulations in the US, Europe has one, China has blocks the trading of certain things, um, speculation. I think the idea was the first version was it's an unstoppable magic global thing. We have no laws, no regulations because we have smart contracts. Uh, code is law. And then, hey, there are laws. <laughs> These things are actual financial instruments and there are laws. So I think the important thing is to understand there are local laws and to focus where you are. And you can do some things which are generally legal in the whole world. And if you want to do something which is not legal everywhere, you should really focus on which market you're doing. 
Um, we are particularly integrate focusing on the European market. They have, they're working on, uh, some general regulations, uh, in Europe now. So they have so many different laws and trying to unify them, especially with crypto, uh, cryptocurrencies, financial instruments, and they're going towards regulate DeFi without, with KYC, with controls. Um, and they want to sponsor that as opposed to just, you know, free trading anyone. Um, I believe it's going similar direction as China is, but to enter that market, you really have to understand where the rules are, as Brian said, where the regulations are and what the customer wants. So um, luckily we have been working with a number of uh, connections with financial institutions in Switzerland and um, England in particular, other countries as well in France. So understanding what they want, what they need and what regulations we must support and allow, to allow them to do their business. So I think that's really, really important part coming in is how can we add uh, the minimum support for regulations in the blockchain to allow us to be compliant with the local laws, to allow us people to really use this stuff, businesses to use it at work and not just random people, um, but at the same time, not destroy the potential of blockchain. We don't need four intermediaries in there. We need a smart contract to work as an intermediary, but fills these rules of regulations. So I think that's a really important part going forward. Good, thank you. Jeffrey, um, same question to you. Um, you know, you've been a few years in the industry. Um, you've had some success. What's your advice that you would give to um, developers who want to, to enter the Chinese market? Yeah, one advice might be based on our own experience and practice um, that, um, that is uh, what the Cosmos and the Net developers are doing. Because um, right now, the, um, just on the technical uh, aspect that consortium blockchains is the te technology that uh, I encourage in China mainland. So um, yeah, yeah, but uh, the public blockchain technology, which we should not be ignored that because um, there are many cutting edge technologies on the uh, public blockchain, which is uh, quite uh, developing right now. So um, my advice is that uh, actually we should uh, uh, maybe have more interaction with the uh, public blockchain and also the uh, consortium blockchain technologies that uh, we can bring more open source technologies into the permission, also the consortium blockchains. Um, like on one side, we can contribute more on the open source ecosystem, like on the Cosmos ecosystem. We can have, um, uh, like we develop many modules and uh, also the infrastructures to this open source uh, ecosystem. And uh, well, on the other side, uh, we can cherry pick some of the technologies that can be used in the uh, enterprise uh, scenarios. Because I think, uh, like in many use cases and the scenarios of the permissioned blockchain, I think this kind of the uh, open source technology is quite useful, like the, the interchain and uh, also may, maybe we can call the cross chain technologies mm -hmm. that can interact with the different permission blockchain and the consumption blockchain. So this is a really, uh, uh, I think really useful, uh, scenarios for the consumption blockchain. But uh, this kind of the technology is, uh, quite, I think is quite, uh, mature, uh, in the public blockchain scenarios and the ecosystem. So uh, I, my advice would be this: uh, bring more open source technologies into this kind of the, uh, uh, Chinese uh, permission the blockchain uh, scenarios and uh, um, and maybe the the markets. So that's my advice. Great, thank you, thank you for that, Jeffrey. Um, so I want to uh, I want to actually turn over the the floor to to the three of you. Um, I've been kind of playing the central moderator role, asking questions here, but want to, in the spirit of de decentralization, uh, give each of you the opportunity to ask questions of each other. Um, so let me, uh, maybe Ethan, let me, let me start with you. Okay. Um, yeah. So I know um, Jeffrey a little bit from chats. So I've never actually met him, <laughs> but uh, yeah, and I really appreciate the work that Iris has been doing for some years, both in the interchain. I want to say the work you mentioned, the interchain has been a core contributor for some years. I've heard about two years ago now um, adding uh, key features. So it's been great work and great contribution, not only using the technology, but really making it uh, happen. Um, so congratulations on that one. Um, I guess my question would be, 
uh, we look forward to, with T-Grade, being able to integrate into more markets. And so what advice would you give us um, if we say we are working on a self-sovereign framework in Europe and in one year we have onboarding European markets, moving from there to a Chinese focus? Uh, what would you recommend us to do? And how, would, how could we recommend other businesses that are building on our technology to move to the Chinese market uh, or connect to them, interconnect to them? Maybe that's the best way. Oh yeah, I think maybe a maybe a difficult question for me uh, because um, uh, I think uh, each uh, each countries and each part of the uh, maybe uh, regions in the world have their different uh, regulations and other uh, and their business ways to uh, deploy the uh, like uh, and also running the production projects. So for for China, I think this. Uh, there are many um, regulations uh, right now uh, related to the blockchain and also the uh, financial areas. So, oh, but, but I, I do uh, know, uh, know know some of the T grade. Uh, you are really doing a, a great in the T grade projects, and I think um, maybe uh, maybe you can uh, share more like the the, the experience and uh, what you are like building with uh, how, how you can. Uh, complying with uh, Europeans' uh, financial regulations, that uh, I think it's uh, maybe a very good and also very valuable experience that we can use a T grade. Also, maybe uh, we, uh, we can uh, like see how this can be adopted in the in the Chinese market later on. I think that will be quite useful because T grade is really doing great in the in the European uh, regions. Yeah, let let me add uh, something in, in to Jeffrey. So basically, I, I think uh, my suggestion is also you bring your success case uh, to China, uh, because uh, in China, I know that a lot of uh, uh, enterprise or even government they try to learn from this new technology and a new business model. So the the uh, if you have a success case in Europe and they explain how mm -hmm. it works and how uh, it uh, applied to the local regulation. Uh, so it's it's very good learning uh, well, uh, stuff for the Chinese market uh, people because they, they basically, I would say they are pretty open. They, they want to learn new stuff. They want to be creative because this is uh, just like a whole new world, right? So like, uh, just like three days ago, I was in a business tri trip with uh, Bian Jie's uh, CEO, Parrot, uh, in another city of China. So even the mayor, mayor, mayor uh, himself is hosting a forum uh, in the weekend on Saturday. So uh, he grabbed a lot of uh, entrepreneurs and also government officials and, and uh, local enterprises to sit together to discuss what we can do together to improve the local economy. So I, that's why I say they are looking, they are pretty hungry to looking for the good cases, uh, to learn from that and uh, try to apply into the local infrastructure. Just like a, a, a story of myself, uh, about 10 years ago, more than 10 years ago, I was the CTO of MSN China, Microsoft, MSN China. The major part of my work is to do the localization to learn from the global market uh, operation model and uh, product and uh, try to apply to local, uh, follow the regulation and to make it work and can open for business in Chinese market. So I think for blockchain type of application, it has the same route uh, to do. There's nothing new, right? The methodology are the same. So let's uh, just do the communication first, case study first. Then you can see huge opportunities maybe show up in your, in front of you. Yeah, very, yeah, very, very good point. Thank you, Brian. Yeah, I, I think uh, when we, maybe we have a, um, a suitable opportunity so we can introduce this tea grade into uh, a yeah. different, uh, different part of the Chinese uh, government yeah. and also scenarios. Yeah, exactly. Cool. Yeah. Thank uh, you, yeah, yeah, when we get uh, some businesses in Europe onboarded and happy yeah, to- Yeah, I have uh, another question. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Yeah, I will ask you other questions to uh, also have a question for, for Yeah, uh, Because we, we see uh, the web assemblies, we are using the web assemblies uh, virtual machine uh, integrated uh, into the BSN's open information blockchains. So uh, do you have any plans for the web assemblies that, um, uh, uh, or even the Cosmos 
to launch the, the, their uh, its mainnet maybe this year, or do you have any plan for that? Um, yeah, so our plan is we have two things. We create the Cosmosm runtime to like the EVM, and we have our chain degrade. Mm. Hopefully, T grade will be this year. I cannot promise. <laughs> We're targeting H two, uh, twenty twenty one. Um, yeah. um, the other thing is, um, Cosmosm. We're focused right now. We have proposed a RFC, a proposal for a one zero stable release of Cosmosm. We did that one in. We proposed that a month ago, a little over a month ago. We cut a version. We've gotten some feedback on it. I'm making small changes, nothing major. So we hope to have within one month a final version. That's a 1.0. What that means is we provide a stable interface. We can iterate on it, but it'll be backwards compatible from now on. And that is the first version we will suggest um, pushing on to public blockchains, right? So we have two people have done it earlier. They'll have trouble migrating now, uh, Terra and Secret Network. Um, but we should all three to people we'll have within one month this. You can start integrating into all of your networks at uh, Bianje. You can try integrating this now. A contract written on that 1.0 version will be usable in two years from now on the same versions. We will add slowly features, opt-in features, but we'll not break any existing contracts. We'll maintain that compatibility um, and slowly add, uh, refining it, slow piece by piece, add another callback for cryptography, for example, but nothing fundamentally different. Um, and that is what we are looking for is a real platform. Um, from that level, we're still only in Rust contracts right now. And when we have that stability level, we look to add support, for example, for Go. That's the next one we look for. Um, I don't know when, after our mainnet launch, probably, because we need to focus on that first. But after that, we would like to add support for building Go contracts, and they'll be compatible. So you can have a contract written in Go to WebAssembly and one written in Rust to WebAssembly, and they can call back and forth without any trouble. And that is our vision for probably early 2022. Okay, okay. Thank you, Yusei. Yeah, well, it, 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 it looks to me, uh, well, <laughs> such a smart contract is uh, very good uh, stuff we are looking for too, right? So uh, I have been talking with Jeffrey uh, time ago. So because, uh, you know, for our public uh, chain version of uh, Optic on IrisNet, we are trying to build a token economy on top of that. So if we have the smart contract part ready, it will be more Flex, flexible for us to run such decentralized uh, operation uh, model of a business. It's very important. At the same time, I, I think, uh, yeah, so Ethan, in Europe, even you don't go to China. So we, 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 I already see a lot of business we can connect with each other, right? So we're building the Chinese version, uh, OPB version of uh, Optic. At the same time, we have the Irish version of Optic. So for the international connection, uh, we, I, I do see we have a lot of things can work together. I look All forward right. to that. Well, thank you. Um, it was great to hear, you know, all the things that you're doing, both you know, inside the China market and in other markets and, and how open permission blockchain and BSN can, can play a role in, in helping that. Um, so I want to thank all of you and uh, mm. hope to see you again sometime in the future.